game a bit. Also in game because it's a little loud, I think, for streaming. Audio, master volume. That you do. Okay, uh, it seems to be running. Crap, that wasn't supposed to happen. All right. Um, supposed to show, but ah, there we go. Let's see if it shows up here. There we go. I'll just let it first then stand here for a bit and see if anyone shows up before I started. Did send a message to some people I know who were interested in watching for today's stream. Anyway, I'll quickly give the introductions then. Baldur's Gate free. Now, I know that the game has, to some people, of course, the game has been out for a couple of weeks, about a month or so now in early access. People have been, of course, going through it, probably with the uh, stream, uh, sele uh, the stream extensions, so people who are viewing can make decisions, but since I know that my streams don't get all, barely any sort of people watching, so I didn't see really much of a point. So, uh, I'm just going to sit this out for a bit, and... Uh, wait it out and once people start if I see someone show up then of course I will then first of all ask whether I should go for once again from the start since I sort of already started off with a Seldarine Drow but for people who might be interested to see from the start again I didn't get too far so it wouldn't miss out too much but if people would be interested so let's see low campaign okay I think there is a good idea what I can do here actually I'll quickly get rid of I'll hold on to those saves. I'll keep these. I'll simply create another profile and call it the stream. There we go. For those viewing, if you follow, you can, however, of course, if you want to send something in the chat, just click the follow button and then you'll have access to the chat option for those. Who would be interested in doing that? Things seems to be going quite well, except the audio has seems to have reverted back to normal. So I'm just saying that to about 50. There we go. So I can see that someone is viewing. I don't know who it is. If you do, you know how this works. So, and I'll just wait it out just to see if anybody else shows up. I'll give it about, let's say, five minutes and well, let's get started then. Let's just go quickly over some options just to make sure that everything is correct. Auto save is on. Number of auto saves. Um, number of quick saves. Oh, ah, I never knew you could do that actually. Cross save. I'll keep that off. Show speaker. Mm, no, show subtitles obviously. Rotating mini map. Show tutorials. Always show item stack splitter. Mm hmm. Peace highlights, no, no need for that. Net highlights, tactical highlights, unit system, metric. I'm not from dumb fuckers, Dan. Panning speed, edge panning, lock mouse to window, dynamic camera, camera shake, attack camera, attack camera, other players, auto add consumables to bar, auto add containers to bar, auto add usables to bar, enable Twitch integration, extension secrets, sync settings, Key bindings are pretty much already at the good there. Pretty much got decent quality graphics, so everything should be a okay here. Should be correct here. Sound quality can only be set to high or low. Mute sound when not focused. Okay. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Master volume, of course, like I said, put it there. Like I said, I'll just give it about five minutes. So Baldur's Gate free, of course, like I said, is in early access, so it's far from complete. Anyone who is, of course, very much interested in this particular game has probably already viewed plenty of it. I have been playing through it. I have only played up to this point with one character, most of it. it and I'm going to be running this character as a Drow Ranger because, well, I'd like to be an original. You know, 
Everyone, except this one won't be what a, a drow with twin scimitars and a pet fan for. I'm not that much of a ripoff. And you? Uh, I've only played up to... My first character that I created was basically designed around the same character that I played in my first D&D campaign, which is a half-elven warlock. They have not yet added all the races. For those familiar with Dungeons & Dragons should know that the game will only include most... Most, uh, basically, at the moment, we only have access to almost all of the player handbook races. Uh, the only ones not including right now are Gnomes, Dragonborn, and Half-Orcs. Although they have expanded with the additional uh, Unearthed Arcanas with more specific selections when it comes to Half-Elves. And uh, a sub much more sub-race divide with some of the others. They've also changed it a bit more during the due to the Baldur's Gate setting, of course, which is one of the D&D settings. Baldur's Gate for, the Baldur's Gate setting is basically more just sort of... When it comes from its psychological and social aspect, a much more darker down to earth sort of thing things are still kind of you know magical and fantastical to some extent but you know it's not all peace and love and that sort of thing actually just gonna turn on that audio a bit more to about 70. there we go so when it comes to that things can get a little um uh things can are a little bit more you know typical you know there's, like I said, when it comes to the races, they've gone pretty far. Like I said, you can actually choose sub-races for tieflings. Up to this point, they only have three. I'm pretty sure they're probably going to stick with that because these are the most free primary ones. And something tells me they probably play a little bit of a part into it since usually whenever Baldur's Gate Free gets involved, the Nine Hells tend to rear their, tend to rear their asses at some point. As for the Baldur's Gate Free, first of all, of course, another thing about it. This is the third game, uh, this is the third video game in the Baldur's Gate Free series. Unfortunately, the previous two were made by a different company, so this one isn't a direct tie-in to the as the originals are, as the original two are, so... Uh, so basically on that front, there is no way of knowing whether the, you know... Whether there is going to be a direct link due to the events from the previous two games up to this point, it will of course be based on their own story, which involves a whole bunch of things. I've been playing quite a bit for the story. It's both, it's got its typical sort of threats may have thrown into your face, but there's definitely something going on behind the scenes there. I'm not exactly clear or sure what that is about. Anyway, it, I think the five minutes are done, so I'd say we just get started and uh, let's have this party again. Let me just hide this one over here. This is the cinematic. Probably just about anyone who's interested in this, who's even had a mild interest in this game, has seen this cinematic. Except, of course, there's a little bit extra added this time around. I gotta admit though that this design that they've done for the Nautiloid and of course the whole uh, thing involved here is very well done. But then again Larian Studios hasn't exactly failed in that department when it comes to the video game, uh, when it comes to their adaptations of D&D styled RPGs. Because the, guy, the people who work at the studio are very much themselves lovers of the of the D and D fr franchise, so oh, oh, that is, I cannot imagine that being a pleasant experience. Now it's our turn. <laughs> like, no, no, no! Look at me! No, look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Just keep your eyes. Just keep calm down. Look at the tadpole. Look at the tadpole. Just imagine it being a slight pinch. Bonk. If you uh, are quickly disturbed, easily disturbed by that kind of stuff. Who are you? 
and you probably don't like that. Okay, so this is the character creation. Unlike with the uh, cinematic, they do not show this part because, well, it's character creation, you don't really have to see this. Uh, so, just like with uh, Larian's other studio, uh, first of all, well, we're gonna have to give her a name, and then I had a name for it Eldura. I'll just go with that. I don't care about it. Actually, I know something. Let's go a little, uh, Deura. <laughs> Debra. <laughs> I don't know even how to pronounce that, but I don't give a shit. Anyway, um, much like with Larian's previous, uh, CRPG, which was, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, as far as I remember, was their last game in general that they released. Uh, they're gonna do something quite fun, I think, which is that you can uh, choose not only to create a custom character based on either male or female, as you can see here, but you can also choose, once they've made that accessible, this is, a, again, after all, really access, so not everything is complete, is the uh, ability to choose actually to play as one of the companions you have that you meet along the way because of course this is a CRPG you do not want to try and solo this could be that they might do that with certain mechanics but I wouldn't assume they will you could probably just not take any companions with you but to be honest soloing this kind of crap ain't easy I've been getting my asses kicked even with a full group so, you create your custom character here immediately, you give it a name, and then you have to choose your background. And backgrounds mostly involve gaining proficiency in skills, which is tied in this area, which is also tied to your abilities, but we'll get to that point. So, first up, you have Acolyte, which means you are a follower of some kind of, usually monastic order, you know, a follower of a god or some kind of philosophy. There's charlatan, you're basically just a fucking uh, pathological liar or maybe a compulsive liar, you get to pick. You have criminal, can vary, can, you can be from small time to maybe something a little larger. Entertainer, speaks for itself. Folk hero, you know, typical thing. Guild artisan, basically means you're a craftsman of some kind. Noble, speaks for itself, you're of the higher society. Hermit means you've been living in seclusion all by yourself. It can vary from all kinds of different things. Uh, basically, usually you're just a guy who sticks to a small hut or maybe a small or make your home in a decrepit temple and stick to yourself. You know a lot about certain things, but you tend to stay to yourself. Outlander means you're the traveling type, but don't really get involved with a lot of people. Sage means you're a scholarly type. So you're very, your book smarts in particular, as you can see, arcane and history proficiency. So you stick your nose a lot, and you're the bookworm type. Sailor, you're. This is one of the more specific ones, and I have an idea for this for my own character uh, later down the line with a particular one. So, sailor speaks for itself. You live on the seas, and uh, most of the uh, cities you remain in are port cities. Soldier speaks once again for itself. You gain a, you are familiar with combat and you mostly are, you also gain certain provision against of athletics and intimidation are the standard once you get and you also get to make a few additional selections. Athletics and intimidation make sense. You're physically capable because you've been beating up people in a, for a military cause and you tend to, and people tend to be the scared the shit out of you when you come up with shard and blunt weapons and, uh, well, scare the crap out of them. Urchin basically means you're a street rat, you know, orphan, blah, blah, blah. After surviving a childhood in the streets, you know how to make the most out of, out of very little. Basically, minimum lifestyle, scrounging for food, and that's about it. But for this particular character, I will be going with the Entertainer because I have sort of this character's uh, character sheet actually planned for at some point, maybe as a backup character for a D&D session to be for a D&D campaign in general. So that would be fun. So we can only choose custom, so let's move on. Here you get to make your choice of race and sub-race. So with Elf, at the moment we only have two. Technically free, but this is a whole different matter. There is High Elf and Wood Elf. The each, of course, gain their own benefits. As a Wood Elf, you basically gain more advantage in certain other things, such as Fleet of Foot, Mask of the Wild, and a Wisdom Increase, while if you choose a High Elf, you can choose your own cantrip as well as gaining a plus one to intelligence and well 
base racial speed. These are the general race, uh, these are as it says race features, so this is what you get always no matter which elf you choose and these are the sub-race tra sub traits. This one is always a very much a, f a favorite among D&D players which is the Tiefling. Which as you can see has a very demonic look, it's because the, as it says bound to Ness is the deepest. The, in general the Tieflings are, have been affected by are actually mortals who somehow got stuck in hell for a time and they've been affected by the energies that swirl around them and they've when they came back they suddenly dis uh, discovered that due to their experience there they've been turned into sort of half demons although they have no direct tie to devils directly and they're technically not even half devils they're technically basically well I'm using it they're just mortal beings who have uh, inherited certain effects from being in the nine hells you can choose either an asmodeus tiefling which gives you a these are always your race features you gain a base you gain the base racial speed and an intelligence and charisma increase as well as the thaumaturgy to cantrip including actually a few additional ones later down in the levels as a asmodeus tiefling you have the mephistopheles tiefling as you can see it's a much more blue color skin you gain the mage hand cantrip and you gain once again these uh, benefits and then there is the Zerial Tiefling which is based around the devil of the first layer of hell Avernus called Zerial who used to be an angel you get once again gain the charisma you gain the thaumaturgy uh, cantrip as well as the strength and charisma uh, uh, the ability increases you gain that as a passive bonus due to your race that cannot be changed based on these races and sub races then there are the drow which is a different variant on the elf which are dark elves these are elves that live underground and preferably stay there they're cruel and sadistic bastards by the way these are not the friendly folk these are not friendly elves and this isn't so much as a sub race to be honest and it is actually the only sort of physical difference this is that you have red you know cool red looking eyes as a Lolf drow and as a Seldarine drow ah so that's how you actually spell that how did I spell it in here I only forgot uh, I can still make those changes uh, let me just take care of that real quick uh, uh, look I forgot how it was spelled I'm not that familiar with Seldarine drows there we go Taking care of this, these are drow, are basically actually, to a degree, they used to be these drow, but they were like, screw it, this uh, kind of lifestyle ain't n n doing it for me, I'm getting the hell out of here, I'm gonna live, live on the surface away from the underground. Technically, it's not a good idea for them to be underground, because dark elves in the books have something called sunlight sensitivity, which means they are very much, if they gain disadvantage while being on indirect sunlight, but that's being sort of... Uh, a va this is being taken care of due to a certain circumstances. There are the humans. Up to this point, you can only choose the standard human. They could still put the variant human in, but I'm not sure if they're going to do that. These are the only race that are not standard in the player handbook, but are added, which are the Gif Yankee, because because of the opening shot involving uh, Squid Man. Yeah, this isn't getting involved because, well... There are two tied to it not to be involved. There's dwarves, and there are two types, gold and shield dwarves. They, I'm not too familiar with dwarven, yeah, the, the dwarven sub-race differences. There is, of course, the half-elf, which allows you to be a higher half-elf, a wood half-elf, or a drow half-elf. And as you can see, you gain that nice little pale skin design. And then there's the halflings for anyone who wants to live out their closest thing to a Lord of the Rings uh, fantasy. Anyway... Like I said, I was going with Drow, because that's the idea. Seldarine, Drow. We'll keep it with this, and let's move on. Funny thing is... Hells. Something just woke up down here. You can choose both female... Slot. The stone's less worn here. You can, and also Instantly choose back. male voices. Hells. Something just woke up down here. The stone's less worn here. So, you can do you that. Uh, let's do some custom quick customization. I already pretty much had this. Yeah, they still need to work on some of the faces because a lot of them are not exactly to my liking. This one is the more one I like the most. I'm going to go with a very dark skin. For those who are interested in creating very unique racial characters, you can just basically extend it to give you the full color scheme if you don't want to be too 
you know, traditional, but I'm keeping it like this. As for the eye color, I might just do that for the shits and giggles of it. So I'm giving her still the red eyes without having to be a lot of drow. Uh, uh, when it comes to this though, let's see what the options are. I think I'm just going to go with the very pale white hair design. And I'm looking for a nice little... I think I'm just gonna go with the one that I had and it showed off with the female elf one before. I kind of like it with this. I know it was somewhere in here. Let's see if we can find it. <laughs> For anyone who wants to go with the bulb cut, you can do that as well. Uh, also, a thing for people interested for having a character with. Uh, female characters with a beard. That is an option, except elves can't grow beards, including the drow, so. No uh, uh, drows would be it, I'm afraid. As for tattoos, I did have a tattoo design for this. Not that one. Yeah, uh, making the intensity a little less. All right. And I'm doing just a little bit of makeup right there. Yeah, I like that. All right, this is pretty much how I had an uh, idea with this. This was too. This was easily taken care of. So, moving on, classes. Up to this point, we have access to only six of the player handbooks classes, which includes cleric, fighter, ranger, rogue, warlock, wizard. I'm going for the ranger because it's the only class that the that you don't have a companion have that does have that. With the cleric up to this point, we can only choose as far as I and they haven't expanded on it. Life domain, light domain, and trickery domain. The life domain is about as basic as, as it can get. You're basically the most de facto healer. You will always have healing spells ready. You will always be ready to make sure everyone stays top notch alive. Light domain is all about being, of course, a much more... Um, However, all about much more, well, it's light, so you gain a lot of illuminating spells, which includes Burning Hands, because fire illuminates, Fairy Fire, also very handy, the Light Cantrip, as well as, standardly, the these are always standard, the Bless and Cure, cure Wounds, and these are all the standard spells you get. There should be more, I think, but again, this is early access, so not everything is complete, and then there's the Trickery Domain, which basically gives you access to much to trickery spells which involves a lot of enchantments and illusion spells including this one which is special to the, the trick to the um, trickery domain which is blessing of the trickster and for the other two you gain oh, wait uh, that's something different uh, the light domain basically gives you this cantrip standard like all of them gain you special benefits at some point it depends on what you are uh, what are you gonna get later down the line. Life is about as basic as it can get. Funny thing is with the cleric you also get to do, and I know for a fact that this in can influence interaction with certain characters, is you get to choose your god. So that can be basically all the sort of ones that the Baldur's Gate universe is known in. Saluna, Shar, Tempest, Tyr, Bane, Helm, Merkel, Ilmhunter, Mistra, Ogma, Kalamvor, Ball. You can even be basically a follower of the god of murder, which was the center point of the two previous uh, Baldur's Gate games. That's kind of hilarious, so that's kind of cool. But it wouldn't really work when you're playing as a life cleric to be a... You could basically... The way you could spin that is you keep people alive so the ball can kill them later down the line, but that seems a little odd. Anyway... The other class is, of course, the fighter. It's about as straightforward as you get. You're just really good at hitting people with weapons. Rogue is all about the sneaky, sneaky, stabby, stabby. And the warlock is all about having power at the exchange of your soul. And if you just want to go for the Harry Potter feeling, just go with the wizard. But I'm going with the ranger, which already gives you quite a few nice little two selections to be making. Game proficiency and... Uh, you basically, the favorite enemy works a little different. You either choose Bounty Hunter, gain proficient in investigation creatures you restrain have a harder time escaping. 
They've changed it a bit, but a lot of people have actually said that maybe Larian Studios improved on the original Ranger, where Wizards of the Coast in the book kind of ruined it. So, uh, there are different versions. Basically, Bounty Hunter is the most basic of the Hunter styles. Keeper of the Vills, the closest thing, as I would say, is associated with the Horizon Walker. Mage Breaker is specific. You're just really, really good at uh, striking down uh, any spellcasters. Ranger Knight means you're basically working for a nation. And Sanctified Stalker basically means you are part of a Holy Order. And suit to the character that I had in mind for this, it will be part of this little thing. As well as this, you have killed the strong women with animals. You can cast Find Familiar as a ritual. Urban Tracker, you're an expert at navigating the wild within the city. You gain proficiency with the disguise kit and thieves tools. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. Wasteland Wanderer, you have spent endless days surviving desolate tundras, gaining resistant to cold. Uh, I think I'll just go with this because poison resistance is always handy to have. Fire makes sense, but... This works the best due to the character that I had in mind. Then there is skills. Skills are based around both your class and... Uh, uh, how can I best say this? Around the idea of being a... Uh, my brain is just sort of melted down right now. It's been a bit of a... Thing. So these are skills you get. Skills are basically unique uh, functionalities you can perform in, in the books itself depending on whether the DM tells you to. In the game it works basically. It gives you conversation options and it also improves certain aspects that you get to do based on that. So acrobatics is all about uh, nimble. Religion is all the understanding of gods and everything affiliated with it. And performance is all about putting on a show. Animal handling means you're better at understanding animals, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception. It all very much gets straightforward. I'm keeping this as it is. It works very well. And these are the skills I don't have proficiency. So basically with this, you already gain a additional bonus due to your abilities to these skills. But when you have proficiency, you have something called a proficiency bonus, which you get over time uh, while well, with more levels. And this way... Hello, Whiskas Mega! So, thank you for the chat. Thank you for joining. Anyway, like I said, I'm keeping it here. So the skills, like I said, with the whole proficiency thing is... When you have proficiency in something, that means you get to add your ability modifier as well as your proficiency bonus. So for example, the best example for this, perception is based on wisdom. I have... 14 points in wisdom which means I have a modifier of plus 2 to it so not so I have plus 2 from my wisdom but I also get to add then the plus 2 of my proficiency to this so I gain increased uh, a bonus usually how that works in the book you basically roll the d20 die that works with the game and you add those points of course it doesn't really work with this game in the same way so the, basically it reduces the difficulty the a minimum uh, roll, uh, minimum uh, high number you need in order to be able to be successful at it, which is a good way that they sort of made it work. So basically, it decreases the difficulty of the roll, which makes sense if you're proficient and skilled in something. It should make it easier. Anywho, abilities are basically already they're using the point by system. It could be that later down the line, since it depends per campaign you do with a DM what they choose. For example, some people decide to go with things such as going with the random rolls, the standard uh, point distribution you can select, or point by system. This game, up, the game up to this point only maintains its point by system, which makes sense considering everything. So I'm basically going to reduce my strength and put that in intelligence just to keep it a little bit balanced. Dexterity is already pretty good, constitution as well, although I could maybe so I'm just going to keep it. Now, something unique. I don't know if this is just going to be... I'm thinking this is only with custom characters and not with um, uh, the char companion characters since they have their own story. But with custom characters, you need to do one thing after you've chosen your... After you've created your character. Tell me, who do you dream of at night? This has a, a tie to the whole game's... Um, let's say... Um, to the main game story, which will make become clear later down the line. So I'm quickly. A tidy slot. 
quickly we're just gonna go through this. Um, I'm quickly just gonna go through this. This is a little too much uh, work to do now. And I'm quickly, like I said, this is something I'm not gonna pay too much attention on, so. Uh, let's just go with a different hairstyle for now. Oh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of girls, uh, ladies with dreadlocks, so let's quickly get through this. Actually, I kind of like this with her, so I'll keep it with this. Uh, I guess I could go with a tattoo. And... Okay, thanks for the frog. All right, all right. So uh, everything is set up, so I'm not gonna quickly. So let's just move on. Behold, Kavulu Junior. Thank you for the frog, Miss Gas. I really like the frog. Though you can't be a frog in the game. There is a frog race in D&D, but like I said, maybe with mods then people are going to add the other races. But let's for now enjoy some fun tentacles. These guys are absolutely... These things to me are one of the most nightmarish things in D&D. These things are creepy. And intelligent, which makes them more terrifying. Yeah, this town is about to have, to have a bad day. And you think that the coronavirus is an issue. This dude is like, oh, I should have called in sick today. <laughs> I knew I should have called in sick. <laughs> yeah, it's not that dude's day. Particularly not with this. Yeet. Goodbye, everybody. Now, a little spoiler alert. Most, uh... Illithid ships, because that's a ship, it's not just a living creature. I don't exactly know how the, the whole tentacle thing works. Uh, that Nautiloid has a few unique features, because most Nautiloids can't do this. But as you can see, he's about to get company. It wouldn't be Dungeons and Dragons without some dragons! <laughs> I gotta admit though, I love this, kind of this cinematic. It's so well made. Now, to make it very clear, those dragons are trouble though, because they're red dragons. And red dragons are bad news, except these red dragons work with their riders, mostly out of a agreement made between the leaders of those riders and the queen, goddess slash queen of those dragons. So it's more of a, you know, mutual agreement than anything. It's not a real, like, fr there's no friendship found within these people. It's an agreement made and they uphold a pact between each other, so... And as you can see, uh, that's also a unique feature too in Nautiloid, because Nautiloids, although can travel from different realms, they don't just poof to different locations that like that. So we're about to have a little fun. As you can see, a uh, guy is clearly not an experienced driver. So she's a gift Yankee as well. She may see her option to escape because she knows what's about to happen if she doesn't. Apparently a brine pool, which is where those little, uh, little squiddly things were in, is a very flammable liquid. I actually never knew that before the cinematic. Now... Let's summarize. I got a brain. I got a bug stuck in my brain, and we nearly got fried by dragons. Most people at this point would say it can't possibly get worse. However, <laughs> there is always, I say, one sentence you should never say in your life, and that is, it can't possibly get worse. <laughs> because 
We are in hell, and that is not a figurative speech. Figurative speech. This is hell. <laughs> During a demon invasion. <laughs> of all the times you can end up in hell, this is the worst moment. <laughs> like, it's literally going... This is the perfect definition of out of the frying pan and into the fire. In the most horrible sense possible. And there we are. My head... All right, we're up and about. As you can see, for anyone who's familiar with Larian's previous work, knows how this Might works. Still be stuck inside if we haven't been attacked. Yeah, but we nearly got roasted. As you can see, the game's mechanics are very much like how classic RPGs work. You got all kind of you have your end, you have your hard bar down here, which in this case is comprised of both your uh, spells as well as usable items which can be you know potions and throwable objects such as a grease bottle and before you ask that's not an too bad of a thing to have here there's also these things I've already played through most of this part but anyway I thought that this uh, was a fun little thing to do particularly I want to see how the ranger has been designed in Boltscape 3 because the Ranger, originally when it was launched in the 5th edition version of D&D, was a little lackluster. It wasn't absolutely horrendous, but it left a lot to be desired. So, but maybe, you know, Larian Studios, who picked up on this and made improvements, we'll just have to see. As you can see, that's the one we were stuck in. This is probably the one where that Kifyanki later is stuck in, out. which is called, who is called Lazel. There are more of them, the which is a terrifying prospect if you consider that there were more people in these things. Now, the first little interaction we can already do is the nursery, this brine pool. This is the pool that thing came from, the parasite now writhing behind your eye. For some reason, she well doesn't want to look at it though. Like I said, this is an early access game, so there's still a lot of issues. And this is the first skill check you get to do. This one is based on intelligence. And again, like I said, based on how high your points are within those particular skills, increase uh, lowers the difficulty rating. In this case, it's a ten, and we roll successfully. The casing is fragile; the slightest touch could cause it to crumble. And let's touch it anyway. Its casing crumbles beneath your hands, sloshing volatile brine as it collapses. The boom. But apparently, it did not kill us. That's a good thing, or else this game would be over rather soon. And there we have it. A dead mind flare. Potion of speed and spike bulb. Dead. Good. So, um, when it comes to mind flares, they have a very interesting way of reproduction. That involves the little thing that was stuck behind your eye. That's basically their young, and they reproduce basically by infecting other individuals as long as it's just a human intelligent anyone with enough sentience a sentient human with it and taking uh, slowly over a process of a few days taking over the entire body and turning them into the horrible monsters you see now that are lying on the ground here a brain in a jar. also these things have a s obsession with brains this game, though, different compared to most CRPGs, does have a jump fu uh, function. It's not a button, but you can do it. When they first introduced it, that was already something that people got a little wild over. Because it is actually quite handy to have. I feel better. Anyway, let's uh, go for this. Yeah. For those probably wondering, yes, the door kind of looks like a butthole. There are tablets here on the ground, on this table. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. Devilkin, am I in the hells? Here are the tutorial explanations. I'm quickly just going to get rid of them. I know most of them already. Let's just see if they've got anything useful. More potions, that's always good to have. 
Firebolt scroll, always handy. I'll grab this caustic bulb, also very handy to have. Brains. Yeah, these things have a mind flayers have an obsession with brains. Crap. Ah, mm. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a gift Yankee warrior, and centuries of darkness. Oh, crap. Um <laughs> a thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, another brain in a jar. And more flash behind your eyes. Yeah. Another brain. The illifids, or as they are called, mind flayers, are a creepy bunch. Alright. This allows us to get up here. This guy doesn't seem to be uh, doing all too well. He's under examination, under operation. Torque cannot move or speak. Well, he is kind of missing in his top layer of his skull. And he's going through an unpleasant process as well. Yeah, um... We get to do something you quite interesting here. From this place. From this place you'll free us. Please. Before they return. I failed the perception. Return. These are the standard ones you get to do. Uh who am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You know no creature like this. One that is more brain than person. Well, my character doesn't, but I do. It's called an intellect devourer, and they can be nasty little things. You sound afraid. Why? The enemy. So many enemies. Well, yeah, you have no idea what you fuckers have done. Let's see if I can save it. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. So this is how this works. Basically, you need to choose how to remove the brain. So there are three options. Investigation, Strength, and Dexterity. Only Dexterity gains in benefits because I have a modifier to my Dexterity. Strength requires, of course, well, Strength, and I didn't. And the Investigation requires Intelligence, which also wasn't high enough. So I'd say let's try with the Dexterity. Should be... Eh. Low enough. All right, let's do some brain surgery. Can't be too difficult, right? Well, Believe me, this dude was gone skull, already. But do you notice an opportunity? You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. Yeah, mutilate the brain. <laughs> Let's mutilate a brain! <laughs> Never expect to say that, huh? Uh, of course I failed. <laughs> that means we're gonna have to fight this thing. This is what happens with some of the brains that the mind flayers take into control. It sprouts legs and tentacles! And... This one isn't particularly friendly to me, though. Alright, combat. Now, apparently it got the uh, initiative advantage. Jesus, this thing hits hard! I know how this works. I've played this game before. So, this game allows you to say... Uh, Lab gang gang, let's go Corona! Uh, well, this is uh, a little different than that. So let's stab a brain. Can't do much more than that though. Yeah, they wouldn't make me die at this stage, would they? There we go. Kill the brain. I feel accomplished. <laughs> the brain has nothing. And this dude, uh, I don't think is going to be much good. Thank you. Thank you, Chicken Master. More goodies. More things to throw at the enemy. 
And money! Well, making a uh, Twitch account doesn't cost you a thing. It's usually the subscriptions to channels that cost. But by no means start doing that already, for the love of God. I am a very inconsistent streamer. So let's see what we got. First of all, gotta stay hydrated. I know. I know who you are. Anyway, look at this. This game is graphically such an improvement over Divinity Original Sin. Yeah, we are in the fun place now. So let's have some fun. Yoink. Also, just to mention. You're not being annoying. That's what the chat is for. Interaction. Interact with me. I need attention. All right. These hills over there. Let's meet where. Hi yo. Abomination. This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past, a dragon's wing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange... This world. is the unique functionality we get oh. as characters. My head! What is this? As far as we can say, telepathic links due to the bugs in our brain. Blackith blesses me this day. Okay, very simple. We've been abducted by squid fear, by squidmen, and uh, we got fucking, fucking brain-eating bugs in my head, in our heads, and um, then we got attacked by dragons who nearly roasted us. Now we're stuck in hell, and that's not a good thing. So we need to get the fuck out of here and find a way to get these things out of our heads before we turn into the squidmen. That's it, in anyway. In a nutshell, it gets way more complicated than that. She look. She explains it. Pay attention to her. Unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geich, mind flayers. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. Who am I? Your only chance of survival, and you mine. Pains me to say it. Well, thanks. It is where we might gain control of the Ga'arth, the ship. And the air. Command, we will deal with our gay captors. Give me Yankee language is odd. First, Goddamn weird. We exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Yeah, uh, so the material plane is the regular world where, where all the races come from. So, um, let's see how things go. I'll let her take charge first, because that's probably for the best. Let's have some combat! So, it all bases on... Well, they basically have allowed for some... Well... Uh, well, no, because that requires me to get an Amazon subscription. I already got a Netflix subscription. I refuse to get subscription after subscription for every fucking entertainment industry out there. I am interested, but I'm not planning to get it, though. Because, fuck Amazon. Not actually Amazon as a whole, but fuck Jeff Bezos and his bullshit. Well, it's not that I'm poor. I just refuse to start giving more money to even more fuckers. Who are more richer than I'll ever be in ten lifetimes. Anyway, I don't want to get too ranting on that, so let's go shoot some imps. That's a good way to defend my frustration about this kind of bullshit. So, uh, standardly, you just have your basic attacks. Rangers aren't really all about the magic, so... I have Sacred Flame, but that's all based on saving throws, which usually always ends in their advantage. Uh, but I also have a few items I could use. The scroll fireball this is going to be very useful. These are demons or devils technically, so they'll have some fire resistance. So I'm just going to uh, stick an arrow in this guy's face. See? 
Done. Yeah. Also, you can track all the damage from, uh, I do with this little... I'll keep this open just for the shits and giggles of it. I cannot reach them. Thankfully, she also has a boo. So let's just shoot this one. I miss. That makes me sad. Now it's their turn. Apparently, they do not seem interested. Uh, I'll just do this. Probably should have moved here first, though. I do love the fact that they've had Im improved on the traversal mechanic. And I'm gonna chop this one to bits. Chunk. Now that's what I'm talking about! Ow! Uh, that chicken, uh, no need to apologize, it's just, I just really, really don't like je the Amazon uh, idea. Like, they already possess Twitch and Twitch these days, and the bullshit they're trying to pull there is already pissing me off to no, if, uh, to no extent. Like, now they had an intention for putting ads in while you're playing, while you're watching a stream. Like, what is the fuck? It's already bad enough you have to look at these things before and after. Who the hell needs it in between the streams? Anyway, I'll just pretend that that imp was Jeff Bezos. Is that a little disturbing to say? Maybe. Nice. Nat 20, that's always good. And let's see if I... Oh, okay. That's about as close as I can get. This one is just gonna go there. Big surprise, and I don't know exactly where the imp got the crossbow, but you know, maybe I shouldn't look too much into that. Free damage, so it looks good. Can she reach that? Yeah! Get her! Get him! Okay. That bums me out. So the game really holds on to a lot of the DD. That's already two natural 20s! Noise. are usually quite capable now, of that. To the helm! To the helm! I'll hold on to this for now. This uh, little burned brain have anything? Nope. What about the charred squid? Nice. I'll take that and this. I don't think the skull is going to... Yeah, I'm supposed to believe that. Like, it, this is, game isn't supposed to be horror. I'll take this skull along just for, uh, you know, for some comedic purposes I can think of later down the line. Like, sure, the scary prospect of being in hell while being attacked by devils and squid and brain-eating squidmen definitely is going to scare the shit out of you, but. But that's only if you would ever end up in that circumstance. Try to avoid that. Just some uh, advice for life, I'd say. Alright. So, as you can see, you can also move the camera freely without having to follow the characters. But it's probably best to keep it tracking a bit on the characters at the beginning. Particularly here. Now, I'm not in the best of condition. But this is the tutorial, so they're a little lenient. So they give you these little things to restore your health to full. So there isn't much other option than to go up here, so let's do that, and we get to uh, witness some uh, interesting things happening. I already rolled tw uh, two natural 20s during combat! It doesn't really have an effect in the, sk in the skill checks yet. I'm afraid. You can get a 20, but it doesn't have as much of an impact as it does. The game doesn't allow as much flexibility as an actual D&D campaign, but for a game that is uh, based on this, you can still do quite some cool things. This game still adds much more of a D&D mechanic system than actual most other RPGs do. Like, there is no influence of chatting with this in character. Got me! Got me! Got me! Right in the gut! Tell the babes I'll be alright. The Mind Flayers have already enthralled her. Leave her, or we will share her fate. That's not on the menu today. 
So there's a whole bunch of things going on here. I think I'm gonna need a quill. Let's see what else is around. There is some random loot when it comes to some of the um, enemies you find or kill. I'll give this to her. She can actually use that. This is the character. Uh, this is the character screen, which allows you to see what kind of skills you have, as well as uh, items in your inventory, as well as items you have in your bag. Wait, there is still something over there. Your jump skill, by the way, is affected by your strength, which, if you have a fighter, a barbarian, or someone with high strength, always works in an advantage. You just have to do it like this. Yeah, I'll take it. Alright, that's about it for that. Crap. Yeah, um, here's a little uh, recommendation. Don't walk through fire. Doesn't do you a lot of good. It's also uh, a little out of his mind. This is uh, part of something the mind players can do, which is fall, which basically manipulates the mind of their victims into thinking they're helping people that aren't really there. Basically, a form of, uh, well, I wouldn't say mind control, but this is about as close to it as it can get. Let's get up here. As you can see, you can go into sneak. No, this only works well enough if, as long as you're not in full broad daylight. Let's just shoot these fuckers. That's one down. Let's see what it. Okay, so. Hey, that's not that's not fair, Frick. Get her, Lazel! There you go. Nope. I'll take that, though. Always handy to have an extra weapon with you. I'm a bit peaked, Mom. I think I'll go to bed early. Do I look like your mother? If this is your mother, you need to start asking some questions, dude. Alright. More looting! Look, these things are dead. The dead don't need stuff. Living do. Do not feel sad about looting the dead. It's part of the whole, uh, questing and, uh, you know, fantasy adventure thing. You are needed to survive. Fine to the helm. Do not delay. Do not delay. These things. Uh, I just really think. Ugh. Everything mind flares do is just creepy as hell. I already got a short bow, might as well. So as you can see, these are all trolls being controlled. So they basically do as they are being manipulated by the mind flayers. So no point into helping out. So let's just get to the helm of the ship. There's a mucus membrane there. I'll just have Lacey take care of that. She's pretty good at the whole chopping things into bits with a weapon. There you go. But since I'm of course the lead act, I get to be in, I get to be taking charge here. Once again moving for the anus. Isik, back! Touch nothing without knowing its purpose. Alright, oh, 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 no need to get all uh, touchy about it. Let's see if it can get mm. any Nope. This script. Nope. Another mystery. Ah, fuck it. Let's press a button. Psionic energy radiates from the prisoners, but they do not react. Okay, button does nothing. 
Button number two. Oh, sh That pins him down. That's always good. I don't think the bear, no, the bear hands are gonna be. Like that. Hey! You see, there's the natural twenty. There we go. Do these bastards have anything? Yep. Not much else to see around here, though. Anything in the backpack? Definitely. Don't think I'm gonna need a mug. Not the top priority right now. Somebody's in the pod. You! Get me out of this damn thing! We have no time for stragglers. Come on, we can at least uh, take a look. Look for a latch that might open the lid. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? There's magic at work here, but what kind? That's something we can maybe figure out. Yeah! That's definitely high enough. Warding room. The pod won't open unless they're destroyed. Try to disrupt the the bright one. Uh, lines uh, magic with a touch. Nope. Doesn't Are seem to be. Are you satisfied? We need to go. No! Wait! Sorry. First, let's go in here, because I've already been through this part, so I know the exploration. The brain isn't hostile. How many hosts of these gay infected? Already quite a bit, by the looks of it. A dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. When did I get shocked? Oh, of course, from uh, Sigil. Could mean anything. Definitely could, but I have no fucking clue what. A key. For what? Ah, anyway, let's press a button. What's the worst thing that could happen? I have to admit, despite the fact that this game doesn't focus too much on characters themselves, the attention to the detail of facial animations is still quite well done, despite it being in early access. Also, uh, this is uh, going to be an unpleasant. For anyone who's ever played Mass Effect 2, this sort of thing could be a little familiar. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where they got the inspiration for this from. Because she kind of looks like uh, the, yo the yeoman you had in the second game. Yeah, she's about to go for an unfortunate makeover. Yep. She is now squid. Changed at the pull of a lever. How? If we Yeah, even among um the squid men, the mind flayers, that's an un That is an uncommon thing to be happening. The newborn mind flayer stares at you, weak and dazed. Then I believe it is time for us to, um, to shedaddle out of here. Through the anus! And I know what to go. I'll let her take these. For now. She can use it. Elaborate reliquary. Magic pockets. This is a thing that was always done in... Uh, this was also in Divinity Original Sin 2. Anywho, uh, let's move on. Through another anus! We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. 
Yes, mom. Uh, another anus. That dude looks awesome. That dude's about to be brain food. Yeah. Uh, mind flayers do not eat flesh. They pref they're they on a very specific diet. They're kind of like uh, pandas. They only eat brains. So this dude is clearly uh, not going to have much use for it. Fine. Do it. We will deal with the geek after we escape. So, um, I'm we need gonna to get make. Out of here now. I'm gonna be very straightforward about this. Um, outside of the ones that really get in the way, you ignore this fucker. As much as you might want to fight him, you do not. Let me make clear. Level one. Level eight. You do not pick a fight with a level 8 when you're level 1. I don't care how much you might want to. So we're just going to get rid of these fuckers. Ow. Thank God. Well, that one's uh, down for the count for now. Good. There we go. Preferably not, if we could avoid it. Wrong button. I wanted to melee attack, but... Anyway. Also try to avoid getting the ground with dead. Yeah, I know. Let's get this over with then. There we go. I'm, I'm wondering though, how tough is that big mother? How strong is the other? Okay, he ain't got nothing on this dude. So we definitely gotta avoid that. So, um, well, that's the maximum I can run right now. But we can double our movement. Like this. With a dash. And it only stays like that for one turn. Yeah. We also still have that problem. before they strike yeah Lazel isn't really good with the bow that's more my character's uh, forte So, uh, let's shoot it. Nice! That's another natural 20. This is going quite well. Uh, once it figures out what I... Once she figures out what's in my brain, I don't think she wants it. <laughs> Critical miss. How do you miss with that? Oh, come on! Don't be a dick! Okay, the brain... There we go. Out of the picture. You're not really good with that fireball, are you, buddy? Forward, Istik, before more dragons come. 
mine is mine. There we go. I can make it. Woo! The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. How do you operate this thing? Oh, hi. You look pretty cool. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, they've updated the fire effect! That looks so much better! At the beginning, the fire effect was very bad, was very undetailed. And they never showed this. this. Oh, shit. Gravity's a bitch. Oh shit! Why is there never just a steering wheel on these things? Alright. Stream still seems to be doing quite good well. Now let's hope it loads. I really hope there aren't going to be any sort of ga game crashes. Because that would be too bad. Because I'm running this through Gamecaster and if uh, if games spontaneously shut down, the stream ends immediately as well. Please don't. Please don't have a freeze. Not now. Oh my god, it's still moving good. So yeah, basically most of the screenshots you'll see here are the uh, different companions you get along the way. You made it home! Sort of. She looks nice. That dude, not so much. Hey, look! She's one of ours! <laughs> Uh-oh. That's a lot of gobos. Yeah, um... Did I mention? Did I forget to mention I've never driven one of these things? Yeah, there's still some work on the facial animations, but hey, early access is early access. <laughs> well, oh, did I forget to mention this game has only a very short campaign going? Yep, game's over. We uh, we follow. We plummet to our death. Or do we? Hmm? I have no idea exactly what happened and how it happened. I have an ass I assume that I can guess what it is, but that's about it. Let's see if there's any special interactions based on the fact. I can't believe I'm in one piece. Yeah. We live! Somehow. I wonder if she's going to mention on the fact that she can withstand sunlight. Mm. Fresh water. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. Mangled fisher. Oop. Not much to be found there. As you can see, uh, we've made a bit of a mess here. It's you can see there's some tentacles being about. I'm guessing the ship is a little lab. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna have to revoke my Nautiloid license because I don't. Well, technically, they always say any landing you can walk away from is a good one, so I could walk away from it. So I consider it a success. This dude wasn't so lucky though. 
Must have been fishing when these monsters came. Bad luck. Nope. Nothing of that sort. I'll be taking all of that. There's this. Shanties of the Bitch Queen. I'm afraid I do not know the exact references to be singing sea shanties to, though. I'm afraid I'm not a professional she sea shanty singer, so... However, there is now something I'm wondering if there is more to this. A new. Or can I jump to here? No. It's too far to begin with, so. Uh, for the case in this uh, being shown up, I can uh, interactable things can uh, that I can and uh, well interact with can be highlighted using the Alt button. I usually do this whenever I'm not sure whether I've seen everything or not. A dead fish huh? Nothing of use. Thankfully, we are now going to find a our next actual campaign. Come on! Blasted door! What? Stop! Not another stepper out! Wait. It's you. You're the one who tried to free me on the ship. At least you made the effort. Suddenly, you see what she sees. Feel what she feels. Confusion, resolve, and a hint of gratitude. Ah! Did you feel that? You've got the same thing I do. In your head. Uh... Uh, yeah, let's go with this. Yes. And they put a tadpole in my eye, too. I assume that's what caused our minds to cross. I guess so. But that's the least of our problems. These things are going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. Obviously. I'm hoping something of use might be behind this door. But I've barely made a dent in it so far. Looks like you need a hand. Be my guest, but that door's too strong. Maybe there's another way, up the cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these things. Yeah. Uh, quite some current. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to go with the draw option because this seems pretty cool. Well, these things have been giving me plenty of practice, but I'd rather get out of here than push my luck. Fair enough. Uh, let's be kind, though. No, unless you count these monsters. You're the friendliest face so far. <laughs> Don't hold up your hopes, though. Or just company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. <laughs> okay. They're gonna have to go with this one. I've never met a drow with a sense of humor. Perhaps we'll get along. <laughs> uh, let's ask about the tadpole. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. About five days. Uh, how did you end up on the ship in the first that place? That is none of your business. I suggest we concentrate on surviving. Right. She's very much on privacy. Lead the way. Always will. Companions. This is the actual first time you get a companion that sticks with you. As long as you don't, of course, piss them off too much. Just checking the brains. Most of these usually don't have anything useful. 
The door is unfortunately inaccessible. I didn't have luck picks, and the health bar is infinite, which means it is indestructible. Doors in this game are not necessarily unnecessary, aren't necessarily always indestructible objects, which is very, very good. Anyway, let's do a little scouting. More of those wretched things. They seem scared, though. So, time for me to explain the sneaking mechanic, which works a little different in comparison to some other games. Well, sneaking isn't the strong suit of this, of a RPG, but this game does it surprisingly well, actually. First, let's uh, loot some bodies. Well, let me see things these. Eh, she needs some money too, so. <laughs> so, uh, the stealth mechanic is w quite well done in this game. As you can see, you have a sort of sun uh, next to the cursor. And depending on how full it is, depends on how well you're seen. As you can see, if you're here, well, obviously you're in broad daylight. So, you try sneaking around in broad daylight. In the shadows, of course, this makes sense. You're somewhat obscured. And you can also get full, which means you're very obscured. And most things do not notice you. However... I'm going to try and sneak as close as I can before taking the shot. That, however, is not going to be much use to me. So, let's take the shot, shall we? Better stay back. One strike could be in your trouble. Get her in range as well. And since I made the surprise attack, I can attack again. And I forgot I have this. So might as well. Crap. I unfortunately made an oopsie. Well, I already did that, so not much to do there. Just for the shits and giggles, let's do dancing light. Now it's a little bit illuminated. Let's see if we can at least shoot this one again. There we go. Takes a good amount of damage. Could use potion of speed, but seems a bit of a waste here. These things are fast, but thankfully they can't get that close yet. The dancing light is purely a is purely a functional spell. It has no it has no direct combat practice. I will not use any spells because I'm pretty sure Shadowheart should be fine here. I will, however, do this. Boom. Holy hell! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Nice work, Shadowheart. You dodged. Hit this thing. Oh, almost. Okay, I never had this much luck before. You fight well. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so resting system in this game, in order to recover health, there are a few options. Health potions are the most standard version. Another way is to do short rest and long rest. Short rest regain some of your health, and full rest, uh, full rest or camp, which is a rest, is a long rest. Regains all of your health as well as if you're a spellcaster your spell slots depending of course on what kind of class you are uh, Clerics usually need to take full rest to re uh, well, long rest to regain them all They do have a few other useful functionalities, but well, we'll get to that at some point Let's first see if any of these guys have something useful on them Ooh I'll be giving this to her. She can have these. So let's see, because if I am correct, the rapier does a little bit more damage than the short sword. Fortunately, apparently, you cannot equip a dagger and a short sword, so I'm gonna have to just keep it with this for now, though. It'll do. 
But first, let's see the leveling with this. Well, obviously, I'm gonna have to go for the archery thing. Hunter's Mark and speak with animals. Nice, but what else is there? Ooh, well, I'm gonna get rid of the speak with animals. I never find that very useful. Ensnaring. I don't remember that. Are they actually working the ma... Hold the phone here. Are they actually working the... Uh, how can I put this? Uh, the magic... Uh, the arcane archer uh, sp skills into this or is this one of the unearthed arcana skills you can get I'm assuming this but I'm gonna have to go with this because that's gonna be fun hunter's mark is always a good thing to have because it allows you to do add additional damage to a single target it's a concentration spell as far as I yeah so this wing is quite useful to have and obviously I'm gonna go for archery because well Kind of the ranger's whole thing. And at some point we get to choose our subclass. With Shadowheart, that's already been decided due to what she is. However, we're going to make a few changes this time around. Uh, I'll hold on to this. These can go away. And I'm going to go with Cure Wounds this time around. And... Shield of Faith is always a handy one to have. So there we go. Let's first look around. There are still some things to be found, so. I wish you can hold on to that for now. Don't exactly know why a Mind Flayer has that. I'll give that to her. Because she can make good use of that first see if there was anything up there to begin with. I do like the fact that this time around edges aren't just always absolute barriers and can just be traversed. It shows already how much Larian is uh, further sort of improving I, guess, I suppose you could use the term for. Uh, on uh, trying to make the environment much more traversable outside of just standard paths. There are still limitations that's for sure, but the amount of traversal this time around is a lot more in also three dimensional space with these kind of elevation. I'll be taking those. And I'll take a skull with me uh, to, uh, re to rehearse my Hamlet at some point. Anyway, let's see what we can find around here. Oop. Ah, the advantage thing. All the positioning, disadvantage, and advantage, preparing spells, I know how that works, moving and stacking objects. Got it, got it, got it, I know how that works. I played D and D with friends, I know how this I know how the shindingle works. What the hell huh? I know how lock picking works. Might as well test it out. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I'm not gonna wear it, but handy. Let's see, is there anything around here that I may have missed out on? Nope. No changes over here. And we're about to get the next companion. The guy who and I both. Hello. Hurry. I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? Easily. Stand back. There. Can you see it? That was a boar. Oh shit. Shh. Not a sound. Not if you want to keep that darling neck of yours. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. Uh, let's just go along with it for now. Splendid. 
And now you're going to tell me exactly what you and those tentacle freaks did to me. You have it backwards. They took me prisoner just like you. What in the hell? Don't lie to me. I... Ah! Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm, the light, the fear. Uh, what was that? What's going on? Uh, I'm just going to try to slip free. Nice. Hold on, wait. I saw into your mind. They took you. He Just is a high elf, by the way, but he is a unique case. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Apology accepted. Uh, a kindred spirit. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Introduce yourself. A pleasure. <laughs> so, do you know anything about these worms? Yes, unfortunately they'll turn us into mind flayers. Uh. <laughs> Turn us into. <laughs> he seems to be awfully cheerful of about it. Of course, it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Guys, a uh, real master, though. <laughs> if we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. Uh, uh, let us... You know, I was ready to go this alone, but maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. All right. I accept. Lead on. All right. He gains his rogue features, which is just cunning action, allows him to dash as a bonus action rather than a standard action. And of course the whole opportunity and the whole sneak attack thing, which is very handy to have. Anywho, uh, let's keep this open for now. Yoink. Jesus. Does this keep going by away every time? There we go. Let's keep moving for now. More survivors. We're trying to dig somebody out of the wreckage. So much Something's blood. wrong. They should be trying to get away if they had any sense. Just get her out! person they're trying to save it's the creature from the ship still alive but wounded let's try to persuade them oh that's a high roll something tells me I'm not gonna get this oh ow, that hurts your words fall on deaf ears the creatures hold on them is too strong Monster. That's my daughter! She's dying! That's your daughter! You... You did this! You want to kill her! Okay, so I've kind of been through this situation before, so I know exactly how I'm going to take care of this little problem. I'm gonna s stab this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Fucking natural 20 on his first attack. Fire in the sky and, and then the voice. Oh god, the voice. What happened? You tried to kill me, that's what the monster was using you like a puppet. It looked like you were helping that thing. This voice, what was it saying? The creature's dead. Converse. You tried to kill me, that's what! I'm sorry. I, I saw the crash. Heard someone screaming in the wreckage. My daughter. But wasn't your daughter, dude. She's been dead for years. That thing got into our heads, drove us mad. We wrecked our boat, just trying to get close to it. What do we do now? Uh. First things first, where are we? We're nowhere. That's the point. Even with a boat, Baldur's Gate is days. Wait. You. I can feel you. Just like one of those things. You're one of them. <laughs> Show some. Since this series is a prick, I'm gonna play him as a prick. There's something in your head. Please, we'll take our chances out here. Just, just leave us be. Eh, yeah, screw him anyway. Um. Those people. The mind flayer made them its puppets. That's what they do. They're assholes. It's their whole thing. Wouldn't it be cool if they weren't assholes? You know, you don't really play as a mind flayer in any campaign. I have heard people that have played as one, but it's weird. I mean, you're supposed to be like, an, you're supposed to then play as a mind flayer who has independent thought, and mind flayers don't have that normally. Believe me, if they get if they gain independent thought, they usually get themselves into a lot of trouble with the rest of their own kind because of that. Because they're basically working with the whole hive mind thing, so usually it's not a good idea to be um, to have independent thought with that. Okay, so I could go this way, but I have some useful things to find in this direction. Goblins. Mm, nope. Mm, yeah. I don't think so. I'm good with what I've got. A goblin bow. <laughs> no thanks. You can have this. Now we're about to meet a guy. I'm. I just kind of like him because he's not your whole classic wizard idea. You're alive. This dude. That's unexpected. Hmm, sort of. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood, an intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gale. Well met. Well met. You were on the ship as well, I presume? The very same. A traumatizing experience, if an instructive one. Uh, by trauma, I suppose you mean the thing they put in my eye? Yes. The ocular penetration by an illithid tab pole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not a pleasant Not to experience. Mention, you're staring at me like a rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? No, I'm no wizard. Hmm, pity. But that'll have to wait. The primary need now is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Oh yeah. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? Yes, I've heard this uh, explosion. I know this whole shit. It is to be avoided. Really? I assume you're no accomplished healer either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Okay, I'm gonna have to go with the ranger one because I've never had that before. I'll gather as much. We'll have to look for a solution elsewhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? That sounds like a plan. You're welcome to join me. Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. 
Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes, deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. Alrighty then. In my Warlock campaign, I made this guy into an abjuration style, but I'm gonna go with this one. Sculpt spells. Create pockets of safety within your evocation spells. I like creatures automatically succeed on saving throws and take no damage from these spells. This is what it is, isn't it? Let's just see. I'll hold on to the Ray of Sickness. I'm gonna get rid of Featherfall for now. Can always get something different for that. Since I'm gonna make him into a boom boom blast blast type uh, guy anyway. I'm going to get rid of which Oh, there's an evocation spell. So is this. I'll get rid of this. You always want mage armor. Let me make that very clear. And I'm actually just gonna get rid of this as well. This is always handy to have, and I'll take the ray of sickness for now. Yeah, I'm good with this. You know what? I've I've got a way to help him out. Where is that scroll? Here, you can have this. Always handy to have mage armor on wizards. They're not exactly the most uh, hardy of fuckers. <laughs> they're wizards after all. They're the definition of the glass cannon along with the sorcerer. But sorcerer isn't playable. Isn't yet an option as a class in the game yet. I'm really wondering how they're going to make that work, though. They have some unique features. This is also probably the reason why they don't have the um, bard, uh, the bard, and paladin in it yet. There's, like I said, they still need to add a few of the classes. I guess this, the whole reason probably why these classes were ready. I'm not exactly sure why the ranger was, but probably because it was easier because there aren't that many special abilities based on this. And, well, the other classes that they already put in the game are in there because the companions can play them as. But this one is... Ah, so that's how that works. First of all, although I'm going to be giving this to Asterion. He's our lockpicking dude. I'll give him some food. Give him some food. She can have the ha the apples. She already has one. But she can have more apples. Actually, I need one of those apples. Okay, so I know there is another way to get inside this place. I want to see if that is even the case. Can Asterion get this open? You know what? Let's screw it. Let's have some fighting. Let's have the first real complicated fight. Now I'm going to of course cheat it a little bit by already getting a few of my characters into the appropriate this, uh, location. As that way things can get a little bit more Interesting. So we're gonna split off Asterion and mine. These two are gonna do their own thing for now. We're gonna go into sneak mode. As you can see, as long as you stay out of the sight, you can. No, 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 Asterion. Maybe I should keep him separate as well. And probably move her a bit more forward. Yoink. Does he actually have two daggers? No, he does not. Eh, he'll be fine. So there are a few little neat tricks I can do here. Firstly, we're going to get a kill a little bit more out of the way. 
And we'll have Shadowheart have a conversation with them. Let's first see if I can get this conversation done. Oh, You're fresh. both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone. But we don't oh, know okay. what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we stop. He's got quite a commanding voice for a no. already. That's our ship. Okay, let's see which one has the highest. Uh, I'll think I'll try deception. It actually worked this time! I always failed this check! Well, uh, in that case, come on you lot, no point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese, no? <laughs> Nobody's getting any damn cheese! Now move it! <laughs> that went surprisingly better than expected! That always usually ends up horribly for me. Uh oh. Why is he suddenly. Oh, for the love of. Well, that's just bullshit. Fine. Let's see if I can get. I'm not gonna waste a hunter's mark on this brick. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Let's stab this mofo. There we go. Nice. That's something he needed anyway. Because the armor he's currently wearing gives him a disadvantage on stealth rolls. So that doesn't really work in his advantage. Don't know what those guys are going to be doing, but... This is the first time I've ever had it's been this. a long day. I'll need to rest soon. I think it's hinting at something. Maybe we should do the rest after yeah, the first interaction at the camp. Time and the elements have left the plaque unreadable. Uh, nothing here in specifically. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Alright, Sterian, you can have these. Torches for Gale, since he's going to be needing it. You can have the rum as well. Rope can go to Shadow Art. What about the burlap sack? Okay. I'll be taking that. Twisting vines. All right, let's go to camp and just see how things go. Yes, please. There's still this radiant glow coming from my character whenever I go to camp first. This seems as good a place as any to make camp. Might as well start a chat with Gale. 
Um, I'm seeing footprints in the sand that shouldn't be there. Go to hell. Oh, nothing. Nothing. I'm just poorly making a point. <laughs> Go to hell. An everyday expression. So trivial it's almost meaningless. But we've seen hell. It's real. It isn't trivial. What's on your mind? Devils, dragons, mind flayers. They used to be abstracts. Pictures on a piece of paper. What a difference a day makes. Now we have tadpoles slithering through our heads like carnivorous feti. That's not abstract. Uh, I'm not too worried. We'll find someone who can help us. That's the spirit. Let's be up with the lark. Find a healer before the wee one gets hungry. He still has this uh, little thing stuck above his head. Ah, uh, you're doing so. We're resting here. Um, turning in for the night. It's no feather bed, but it'll do. I suppose. I'm. I'm not really sure what I expected. Really. This is all a little new. The night normally means bustling streets, bursting taverns. Curling up in the dirt and resting is, um, a little novel. The right herbs can make a soothing tea if you can't settle in. Ah, uh, no. Tea isn't really my drink. I'll be awake a while anyway. I need some time to think things through, to process this. You sleep. I'll keep watch. Uh, I'll say this then. Just this once. The pleasure is all mine. A sweet dream. Now, uh, first of all, there's still a few things I need to take a look at. Okay, so this character is already pretty much on the right side of everything. Don't have any new bows. She could use a bow. He can't... Well, he doesn't really need a bow. He's a wizard. He'll be fine. Anyway... Talk to Shadow Art. What were you two talking about? We were just discussing the next step. I see. I'd be careful with who you confide in. You like to stir things up, don't you? <laughs> you don't trust our companions? Well, what do we really know about them? Let's hope we rapidly find a healer. Agreed. The sooner we find someone to help us, the better. Good. We might even get lucky and find one right away. As I see it, we're overdue some good fortune. Rest well. Shadowheart is definitely the one that I'm keeping an eye on because she really seems like an interesting character from what, as far as I, what I've seen about her. And I've got a thing for Raven Harriers as well. There's no redheads to romance in this game, so no luck there. Uh, I still think that this game is doing a great uh, effort into making exactly how a D&D &D campaign would feel, but then with their own sort of spin on it. Like, I don't expect them to do a seamless transition from what's in the books into the game, but they're doing the best they can, and this game is still in early access, so anything that isn't done yet could still be finished. As you can see, this is the camp system, so basically this is going to be like a sort of hub area. You kind of get different characters along with it that aren't necessarily companions. So that could be interesting, but I think it's best just to get into bed. And 
Explore that tomb. Or crypt or whatever it is. He'll be wandering out um, about a little bit. He's still got that thing stuck above his head. Alright. Seriously? Come on! She'll catch up. Let's get this door open. See this works. There we go. Oh. In the dark, use a light source like a torch or a light casting cantrip. Creatures with dark vision don't need an external light source. Being able to see where others can't see will give you advantage in combat. Um, at least he'll be down for a bit. <laughs> Come on! I'll give this to Gale. Already have leather armor. Nice, another short sword. I'll take that. Because if I'm correct, I should be able to equip you. Look at that. Now I got two of the babies. Hmm, I'll give that to Starian. Damn it, that's a no big more prayers, difference. Only dust and silence. Who are those prayers for? Normally the patron god is obvious. Not here. Ink pot. Candle. Useless. Ancient, indecipherable text covers the plaque. Nothing. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone. First thing I'm gonna do is turn off the lights. Because we're gonna be sneaking. And when you're gonna be sneaking, you gotta do the sneaking thing. Sneaking doesn't work well when you're in the light. me let's test out this really Right in her face. Still nothing. Well. Oh. Sorry, lass. Nothing personal. How'd you get past that door? Back off! That's over.
bet she has a poison as well. She doesn't need that. Mm -mm, he's going to need the mage armor again. Equip it. There we go. Now we got a light. in there so Going home empty handed again. Probably should get Gil equipped and supporter staff again. Arian. Let's start with the stabbing. That's done. Huh. Wait, doesn't he have... She's out of the picture. There we go. I'll take it with me for now. Can I get that? Of a whiny bitch he is. 
already got torches. I suppose I can give one to Shadowheart. And the one that Gil already has. Oh, I wasn't pressing the right button. <laughs> I might as well just give one to her as well. Nope. The unclaimed. Uh, go with that torch again. The lighting. Wasn't what is the shadows effects already that well, or did I not notice that before? Because that is pretty good. Uh, that one can go to her, and that one can go to Gail. Don't need any of that. Nope. I already know most of the stuff that went on here, so. Hmm. What's that? A lever. Hmm. What was that? I know. So let's get the coin. I'm on the left. The leader is always at the f at the close corner of the uh, screen. Now let's move on. Wasn't built for the living. That one can go Shadow Hearts. Uh, I'll just send that one to Gale. Maybe at some point he can learn it. Nice. Somebody use that. I already know most. I've already read those books before, so no need to make it too difficult. That's that chamber. Let's first go into this one. Can't really disarm it. But I can do this. That should work with these things. Hmm. What's that? I know what's gonna happen, so. Might be worth a look. Right. Hmm. Hmm. What's that? I can hold on to that for now. Let's do the force, force turn based and <laughs> the 
that out of the way. Let's see if this key works on that door. I actually just lockpicked it every other time, but I'm at least gonna get into that point and maybe then call the stream for quit for now. There we go. Armed scribes, but no sign of a struggle. Now I'm going to. Oh God, so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. I'm going to do an F5 here because I'm going to do something that's probably not the best idea, but I want to see what happens. Looks like someone wanted to bury their secrets. See if she can read this. This book is far lighter than it should be with such a massive lock. Arcana, strength, cleric, and wisdom. Please let Iron let me roll high enough. Yeah! As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scroll. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what? How high is this going to be? Well, not too high. But I roll too low. You know what? Let's try it again. Okay. Gods. These are the names of gods. Once lost, but now restored. So sometimes you can redo a roll. I'm not exactly sure how that worked again. But I might have to check that in the, uh, some of the description. But I'll do that off stream. Not really important right now. Right. Ray of Enfeeblement. Let's check the Entombed Scribes. I'll take that. No, not the... Jeez. Hell. Just take the cup. Let's uh, illuminate the place a little bit. But, like I said, uh, the game just... It's still in the early access, so there's far from anything done. Everything is done, but... If this holds up as it is... This game has such a potential for becoming probably one of the best... RP, uh, uh, let's say CRPGs in a long time. Like, it may not have intense action... But it does do the one thing right that a lot of RPGs have sort of forgotten to be an RPG. And it does it so well because it incorporated something that technically speaking, as far as I know, that anything that still works by more traditional RPG means has never in you know implemented. Scribe of the dead. I didn't think anyone still worshipped him. Description is in a language unknown to you. That might be worth a look. True, but first let's uh, set everybody up in proper positions. I'm not taking any chances here. Where's that one of these pricks? All right, there's one of them. So let's get that one over there. 
scale. I'm just gonna put you um, right about here. Should be good. And you, I will keep for now around here. Alright, shut that hot. Do us all a favor and do your job. So, just taking another safe scum from this. I'm not taking any chances. Yeah, things are about to get a little uh, dicey. that guy uh, let's see what's the best option I've got Uh, let's, uh, well, let's first take care of this one. Oh, that hurt. Right. See if this does anything. Shit. All right, let's then do this. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, he's still asleep. And there's no way I can wake that fucker up. But I can dip it in here. as well really Really? Nice. That's going quite well. Yep. That worked. Let's see if any of them had anything useful. 
Apparently, Gale has something to talk about it, though. Bad form, isn't it? Grave robbing. Judging by these undead guardians, the architects of this crypt certainly thought so. Because my mother raised a gentleman. Then again, to be alive is to be curious. Let's have a look at the loot. It isn't for your pockets only. See what these guys got. They still have something more, even though they're already dead. Despite the fact that I already looted them before. But not that one. See what they were keeping in here. Not that uh, it's not as if I already know. Effort to hide one sarcophagus. I'll give this to Gale this time around. I think he can, could he get some use out of it. The guardian of tombs. Through knowledge comes atonement. Let's open it up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man. That was one hell of a party. What? So he has something spoken, on my face? <laughs> and so thou standest before me. Right, as always. What a curious way to awaken. Okay. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Because that would be senseless. Fair Wilt enough. thou answer my question? Yes. That's so, way. I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? One life is more or more than any other. We are all equal. That depends on the person's deeds. Life is only as valuable. Is as currency. Doesn't matter to me. Otherwise, each life is a value and merit sacrificing everything for. And thus, balance is achieved. If all are at war, none can win. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. No, they didn't. Dead booze are gonna waddle out of here. Wouldn't have it have kept anything else in there. Give it a little bit to Asterion. I'll keep the butt stuff myself. These chambers are much changed. I'm just gonna keep this at full expand. Now I've got a way out of here. That dude's gonna be useful though. At least he has a use. Comes at a price though. The dude basically 
shows up at your camp at some point and can be used to regain your and he can revive apparently par dead party members if you don't happen to have a reviv revivify scroll of revivify with you however there is one slight drawback to that he um of course you know bringing back the dead isn't exactly easy to do so comes at a bit of a steep price. He says about 200 gold. If that's the price he keeps. Could be that he increases it with every turn, but every time you do it. So I just try to avoid the death part, you know? It's usually not a good thing, and this game doesn't allow you... Unless, of course, they're gonna implement the same thing as they did in uh, Divinity Original Sin, where you can basically uh, at some point recruit mercenaries, but I hope that can be avoided in general. Let's get in here. This should be the way out. And there we are. As far as I understand, that should be that. I think it's best to take a short rest for now because, well, let's be honest, I'm not exactly in tip-top shape for two of the char- three of the characters. There we go. That's better. So I think I'll just leave the stream here for now. Uh, I hope, of course, everybody who came to watch maybe comes, uh, stick around for later. Still a lot of things to discover. And... It'll be a fun little thing to have everybody else join in on. I'll be taking those. Because this game has quite some interesting little things involved, so... Footprints. There may be even more so I'm just going to leave the stream here for now, and I hope to, go to see everybody else at, at later streams again. Until then, I hope you guys, everyone has a good evening, and uh, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye! Hope you enjoyed it, dude. You've been nagging on me, so be happy with this. I'll see you Monday. <laughs>